In a previous video, many of you noticed that I have this. This is a, an aluminum plate, and I used it as a test bench. I basically threaded in some brass standoffs out of a case that I salvaged, and put some little rubber feet on the bottom to keep it up off of the, uh, off the work surface. So this particular test bench suffers from one fatal flaw, and it's that while it supports the motherboard quite well using the motherboard standoffs, when you install an expansion card like this Matrox card, it has nothing to support it. And that is where, in a regular computer case, you have places to screw in the expansion slot covers. Well, I would like to enhance my test bench here, and to do that, I'm going to use a couple of uh, salvage case parts. These are some I.O. covers. These came out of, uh, I don't know, like a Fantex case or something like that. Uh, this one right here has a much taller area on the back here because the case was bigger. And it came with the slot covers, but they are free. They just kind of swing around in there so you can see that. And I have this other one, which I think is the one I'm going to use. It also has areas for the slot covers. It's completely open. The area here is a little bit thinner, and with my rubber feet on this particular test bench, it fits perfectly. Flat against the aluminum plate and flat against the work surface. The issue, though, is that I need about an inch of space from the edge here to where the first standoff is located, which means I need to remake this plate. And to do that, let's go find my aluminum. Now, of course, as with any shop, things are tucked away behind stuff. Got some crates here, a piece of wood, a pipe. And I think you can hardly see it, but my aluminum plate is back here. Now what I would like to build is something more than just an baby AT style motherboard mounting platform, but rather a full multi-purpose test bench. When I was actively overclocking, I made a bench similar to this. It's following the same basic style. I have an aluminum plate, but instead of regular brass standoffs, what I have are some stainless steel bolts with some nylon spacers. Now the spacers are important because I would use some Armorflex insulation like this to seal up the air gap between the motherboard and the plate. That allows you to run liquid nitrogen and not have to really coat the back of the motherboard to protect it against condensation. The nylon spacers then assured that when I put down these knurled nuts, it didn't bottom out completely and made sure that there was even pressure across the entire motherboard, which is also important when mounting it. Now, if you are doing regular air testing, the motherboard just sits on these nylon standoffs and everything is fine. Now, what I would like to do is, I'm not going to mess with this because this particular test bench is pretty darn awesome. It works well for what it is and uh, it's a permanent fixture here in the lab. Instead, what I would like to do is mimic this. This is a motherboard tray out of a Silverstone case. I happen to modify this one to accept the Gigabyte OC brace. It slides down over like this. And that allows you to support cards with the OC brace that came in select Gigabyte OC motherboards. I would joke on the website about how this particular product will become a black market item, super helpful and ultra rare. Now what I would like to do is make a test bench that is in the flavor of this. Now, this particular tray is special because it supports just about every modern form factor. We have ATX, micro ATX, we have mini ITX, and we also have the standard ATX with the CEB and the EEB. Now, we don't see too many EEB motherboards. Those were like the SR2 back in the day from EVGA, but we do see a lot of them that take up 
the full ATX width with the three standoffs. Now I'd like to have a CEB option because I do have a couple of those motherboards in the Hardware Asylum vault. And if we take my inch measurement off of the side, across the entire width, we need to have 11 inches of metal. And the full ATX height is going to be 13, even though motherboards don't actually extend that high. That will allow us to have a motherboard plate that will support just about any motherboard on the market, including the Baby ATs, and support my expansion card cover IO thingy that I salvaged from a couple of cases. Now what I have here is some 6061 3 16 inch aluminum. It is the denser style of aluminum. It accepts tooling extremely well and should be perfect for our application. And through the magic of time, the internet, space, and editing, we have our plate cut. I took a file to the edges, so now now the edges are sharp. And all we need to do is transfer our location holes so we can drill, tap, and then attach. Well, I've done a bit of work off camera. Basically, we cut down the aluminum plate, I rounded off some of the edges here, and made sure that you know you can hold it without hurting yourself. And I located where the bottom screw is going to be on the plate. And the easiest way to transfer the holes is to have a template. This is a template that I borrowed from my previous bench table projects. It's drawn up in AutoCAD, I saved it as a PDF, and then you print it. I only have 8.5-11 on my printer, so we had to do a poster style print and basically stitch it all together. And the nice thing about AutoCAD is that everything is accurate. I have a scale here, so basically I know that everything is going to be the right size. And we have our inch space in the lower corner down here, which has our, our two holes. So the green ones are the baby AT style holes and the red ones are ATX. To line this up, basically I trimmed off the corner on both sides. We'll line it up on the plate. We're using this edge here as our zero point. And since we have the height the same, we just center it, drag this over. Drag this over, get it close. This square in the center is where you put your tape. To lock everything down. And then at that point, if we really wanted to see where everything is, you can uh, rub an edge and see that it's on the line. Now the next step, take a center punch, locate the center of each one of these holes, and hit it hard. Now that everything's been transferred, we can peel this off. We have not reached the point of no return, so we're going to put a motherboard on here and make sure that everything lines up. Alright, so the whole placement looks good. Next we got to drill out each one of the spots where we hit it with center punch. Then we'll use a tap to go and tap them down.
next step is to tap the holes. Now to properly operate a tap, you need to use a little bit of cutting fluid. And for every full turn, you run back half. And what that does is that breaks off whatever is inside the tap so that it doesn't bind and break it as you're actually running it down through. Uh, people that have broken taps will know how difficult they are to remove and they will also know that it is very important to break loose the chunks that you're tapping out. Now of course some YouTubers and Millennials and stuff like that will say, oh hey we can just run it in, put it in a drill, and vroom, vroom, which you can. That's how machine shops do it. Although machine shops have much different tolerances and they have much better cutting fluid. Now since this process does get a little messy, I'm going to put down a paper towel and get a couple of blocks to lift up the part. First thing is to take a brush, clean the tap out, or your fingers. I have a little bit of motor oil which seems to work pretty well. Dip it in there, put it in the hole, get it as straight as possible and start it. And once it gets started, run it down, half turn, quarter turn back. Half turn, quarter turn back. Half turn, quarter turn back. It doesn't necessarily have to be a half turn. It can be wherever it starts to bind. Take a brass standoff. This is just a standard motherboard standoff. And it should thread into this hole. And there we have it. Now we just need to repeat that 16 times. For baby AT motherboards like this Super Socket 7, the whole pattern changes quite a bit. We have uh, one, two, and then three along this side. Now when you install this in a case, chances are you have a nylon standoff here, 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 and then the only spot that's grounded is the top screw and the bottom screw. Now you might be asking yourself with the Baby AT, why is this side of the board not supported and why is there not a standoff underneath the memory? These are very high pressure zones on the motherboard and you know, that's probably why this form factor never survived. At least one of the reasons. But there you go. All five screws installed, attached to the motherboard. All right, so the next step for this particular test bench project is to install our expansion card I.O. plate. And I think we'll do that in the next episode.